Okay, in this video I'm going to step you through uh, the material that is uh, located in uh, your Blackboard folder for this week. Uh, this deals with the distillation process associated with uh, the ethanol. So pri previous to this time uh, in procedure one, uh, we saw where we could we could make a mash. <clears throat> we could use corn meal uh, to make a, a, a solution, a mash solution uh, that we could then add uh, catalyst to and then uh, add yeast to in order to uh, begin the process of the sugars uh, being turned into ethanol. Uh, we also saw <clears throat> we could take just plain sugar or any fruit juice that had sugar in it, uh, add some type of a uh, some type of a yeast, and also start the eth the uh, ethanol production or the fermentation process. And so after uh, those two uh, types of processes continue for two or three weeks, we then arrive at uh, a solution uh, that has most of the sugar having been uh, converted into ethanol. And so usually the amount is on the order of, oh, possibly five to eight percent. Uh, and in essence, it's, it's just uh, a a wine, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, but now what this procedure uh, allows us to do is to then, <clears throat> utilizing the concept that will be discussed uh, in a couple of lectures uh, that I've also presented, uh, it will allow us to extract the ethanol from uh, the water solution uh, so that we can get uh, close to 100% uh, ethanol uh, out of this uh, fermented uh, mixture. <clears throat> and so in this procedure three, uh, the objectives were to, uh, to use those two um, systems that we generated or that we allowed to ferment and then to use the distillation processor uh, to uh, obtain ethanol. And so <clears throat> I'm going to go through this fairly quickly, but uh, in essence what happens is because we have a mixture of ethanol and water, uh, one of the components has a lower boiling point than the other. And because of that we can then utilize that that concept in order to boil off the lower boiling point fluid and that in this particular case it would be the ethanol uh, that we're trying to obtain or the alcohol that we're trying to get out of the alcohol water solution. And so <clears throat> when we uh, determine or once we remove as much water as we can or remove as much ethanol as we can. Uh, we then measure the alcohol content and describe it uh, by giving it a, a proof. And basically a proof corresponds to uh, the percentage of alcohol in the mixture times two. And so if you have 75% alcohol uh, in the mixture, uh, one would refer to that as being 150 proof. Uh, that term, terminology comes back, uh, goes back a long time ago when uh, rum was used to pay sailors. Uh, and it turned out that sailors... Uh, <clears throat> If the rum itself was more than 50% alcohol, uh, then it would catch on fire when you would uh, allow it to be on uh, a water, you know, be on water, it would actually uh, catch on fire. And so it was a way that they were able to prove uh, 
uh, that the mixture was at least 50% alcohol. The device that we have in the lab uh, consists of a column. Uh, this is called the uh, fractional distillation column. Uh, the original mash or the wash goes into the bottom, which is just a boiler. Uh, controlled by an electrical circuitry uh, and uh, measured, the temperature is measured. Uh, and as that mash or, uh, or wash boils, uh, the vapors then <clears throat> are allowed then to rise in through some packing materials. Uh, that packing material is typically marbles or uh, it's a surface uh, for which the fluid uh, will condense and then boil and then continually condense and boil and we'll talk about why that happens. Uh, eventually, after a period of time, uh, the vapor that rises is high in ethanol content uh, and it runs through a cooling coil uh, and the cooling coil allows the ethanol <clears throat> to condense and run out of the system. And so what started off as maybe 10% ethanol down here, by the time it gets up here, uh, it can then, it will then <clears throat> leave at maybe 160 proof or 80% ethanol. And so that cooling coil <clears throat> is maintained by just cold water that passes through. Uh, and the vapors then are allowed to condense, and there's a means by which that condensed vapor uh, then is collected in a holding vessel uh, that can then <clears throat> allow us to collect the ethanol that is being produced. And so, uh, in essence, uh, what this lab consists of is going down and just very carefully uh, putting in uh, the material, the, the mash, uh, allowing the mash then to go into the, uh, <clears throat> the boiler, allow the electronics, uh, to cause the boiler to come up in, uh, temperature, uh, and the distillation column then allows, uh, the ethanol to finally, uh, condense and be collected in a holding vessel, uh, for later. <clears throat> for later um, measurements. And so after the first procedure, we had, you know, a couple of quart container uh, where the mash or the sugar wash, the sugar was fermenting. Uh, before we put it into uh, the boiler, we have to use cheesecloth or some way to <clears throat> strain out the solids. Uh, to separate the solids from the liquid. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we carefully uh, obtain about 500 milliliters of the liquid that we then put into uh, the boiler itself. <clears throat> Prior to putting it in the boiler, we make a final measurement of the specific volume. Uh, and again, we had taken an original specific volume <clears throat> and now after two or three weeks of fermentation, uh, we know that the specific volume has, 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 has gone up closer to one. Uh, and so again, we use the hydrometer to measure the specific gravity or the specific, uh, the density of the fluid. Uh, and then we can use the difference in the specific uh, gravity to determine the percentage or the uh, percent by alcohol uh, that we that has been obtained during the fermentation process. <clears throat> and that's what this is doing here. If we had our original data and then our collect our data at this particular point, we could then uh, figure out the, uh, the the proof associated with what we currently have. Okay, again, the distillation process I'll talk to you more about uh, in, the, uh, in the next couple of, of videos. But in essence, we just turn the system on. The system has a, 
a controller to maintain uh, the temperature within uh, the boiler at a certain point. Uh, we watch that during the process and make sure that it does not exceed uh, 205 degree Fahrenheit. And over a period of time, and usually it takes uh, t three to four hours, uh, what will happen is <clears throat> one will start to eventually see uh, droplets showing up on the cooling coils. Uh, as ethanol is eventually brought out of the out of uh, the liquid and uh, forms its own liquid in the holding vessel there, and so as you can see here, uh, this is the procedure that was associated uh, with the process. Now, once one has uh, the ethanol in the holding vessel, it has a much higher value of <clears throat> Of percentage of ethanol and so a different type of hydrometer uh, also based on uh, the use of specific uh, volume or density is used it's called an alcohol meter uh, it's very similar it has a volume uh, and it floats uh, in the mixture itself again the mixture now is going to be maybe 75 to 80 uh, percent by volume ethanol and so it's going to be a very light uh, type of mixture and again the design of the alcohol meter is such uh, that then one can based on the location of where the meter floats one could then determine uh, the proof or the percentage alcohol uh, that is at <clears throat> the end of the process. And so that's what we what's done here. Uh, and basically, as it says, if, if one can get that final product to be oh, at least 85% alcohol or 170 proof, uh, then it can actually be used as a fuel. Uh, what is what else does it have in it? Well, it has water. Uh, in it, but if as long as the water isn't too large of an amount, uh, it can then be used. <clears throat> in real for, in real distillation of ethanol, uh, the various plants will actually uh, try to drive all of the water out of the mixture to get pure ethanol. And we'll see a little bit later how much uh, one could possibly get out. Uh, using the distillation process. And then uh, cleaning up the system and finishing it up. Uh, the second part of this procedure is basically doing the same thing uh, with the sugar wash. Okay, the sugar wash doesn't need to be strained as much as the cornmeal mash uh, would be necessary because it doesn't involve as many solids. And so the process is very much the same, uh, determining the specific gravity before and after the fermentation process, uh, and then going through the distillation process uh, in a similar fashion, maintaining the temperature of the boiler uh, not to exceed 105, and waiting for enough time for the vapors to condense uh, into the holding vessel and then taking out uh, the ethanol fuel and obtaining uh, the alcohol content once again uh, by the use of the alcohol meter alcohol meter and reporting uh, the alcohol level uh, in a proof which is just two times the percentage by volume. <clears throat> uh, being very careful, I mean this is um, this basically is moonshine, if we've heard the term, uh, and it's not to be consumed uh, there. Uh, in any kind of a distillation, there are some other, mm, other um, types of products, such as methanol, uh, that actually can come out of the system that is deadly uh, or could cause blindness if one would, were to, uh, to drink it. So... Uh, what typically happens is alcohol generated by this process 
typically uh, there are materials that are added to it uh, to make it so that it is toxic. Uh, and by doing that, they call it to, to, to denature the alcohol. And so it's to make sure that it's undrinkable, even though it could be undrinkable just uh, without adding anything because of some of the products that uh, could actually be generated. <clears throat> and so with that, uh, we just finish up this. Uh, uh, if we were in the lab, this would take you a, a day or so. Uh, to go through the, the batch process of either the, <clears throat> the cornmeal mash that had been fermented or the <clears throat> sugar-based uh, system that had been fermented and reporting out the alcohol contents. Okay, with that, that is the procedure for distillation.